Hello, so today's video is going to be on the CDV 720. So civil defence, the V meaning 5 apparently somebody let me know because 5 is the radiation detecting equipment um, because they did basically the CDV series was like CD1 essentially, CD2, CD3, CD4, you know, in Roman numerals and V was essentially 5 and that was all the radiation equipment. So this is the 720 um, and this is one of the models that wasn't all that mass produced. Obviously it was mass produced but compared to like the 700 Geiger counter the 715 iron chamber and the 750 decimeter charger pen sort of series. Um, this was a lot less produced and we can have a look at why in this video, or guess why. Um, there's some very good like online sites about all the US sort of CDV equipment so you can kind of look into that and sort of you know have a read up and they'll probably have quite a good write up on there. But essentially this is very very similar to a 715 but there's one major difference. So you might notice from the case, oh that looks a bit different. And why is that? Because it's got a ratcheting um, sort of thing there where you can partially open it, sort of about a quarter of the way or a third of the way, and then you can fully open it. And it's got a beta window there. So how this works is basically there's lots of little holes there and then there's a thin bit of metal there. I think it's 0.6 millimeter thick if I remember right. Um, from looking at the technical specifications, and this is so basically beta energy can more easily penetrate the ionisation chamber and give you a reading. Um, now, I expect the main reason they stopped this was, well, there's probably two reasons. One, these iron chamber units with beta windows at the bottom never seem to work all that well. Because, um, for example, if I get a bit of strontium-90, put it directly underneath, generally the needles barely move, if anything, even though it's quite a hot piece of strontium-90. And I'm assuming it's because beta energy doesn't travel all that far compared to gamma rays. Even if you sit this right on top of the check source, um, it takes a reading in about the middle of the ionisation chamber, I imagine. So, I assume it's sort of a distance thing. You've got a bit of a problem there with beta energy anyway. Um, and the other thing I imagine is sort of reliability and cost to manufacture. So, because, you know, a Geiger counter is generally much better for measuring beta energy because of, you know, the probe sort of system on it, um, these sort of ionisation chambers aren't really as good for that. So, let's just close that back up and then we'll open the case. So it's got, yeah, a nice ratcheting system. So yeah, I assume it's just cost more to make and it, you know, the benefits of it weren't as good. So, the other problem of this, like a disadvantage, is you'll notice that it only goes to times one. The 15, uh, 715 goes to 0 0.1, meaning that the scale of 0 to 5 Röntgen becomes 0 to 500 milli Röntgen on the 0.1 scale, which is quite a practical low range for reading, because the problem with these sort of doomsday iron chamber units is they're basically designed so when you've gone beyond what the CVV 700 uh, Geiger counter, which would go up to 50 milli Röntgen, the idea was that these, where the CVV 715 started at 500 milli Röntgen, um, while 0 to 500 was that, you know, you'd kind of have each one would overlap onto each other. Now, ideally, you'd have probably really wanted the CDV 700 to go up to 500 milli Röntgen, uh, you know, have a times 1000 multiplier, because it should have been capable of doing that, they just didn't seem to engineer it, you know, engineer it to do it. Because lots of other Geiger counters from that period of history, you know, did have bigger multipliers on them. And the Geiger counter tube in the CDV 700 is a very good competent tube. But, you know, what they should have really done is have the CDV 700 go to 500 milli Röntgen, and then any of the others, you know, would start, they'd have a perfect overlap. But what would end up happening on the um, CDV 715 is you'd have to basically use the first, you know, bit to there to see where that goes in. And the problem is that the manuals in these specifically tell you not to read, like, the first 10% of the manual, um, you know, the ampere or whatever, the reading, because that can just be due to analogue drift. So let me show you what's inside this anyway. So from the top it looks pretty much like a CDV 715 without the point 0.1 switch on it. Um, obviously this is where it looks a bit different than the case. So you've got your circuit diagram there that shows you obviously that. It's got the classic smell to it. They've obviously lined the front of the sort of inside of the beta window with some sort of thin bit of aluminium or something. Again, probably to make it hard for beta energy to get through. So this is your device. It's pretty simple. I mean, as simple as these things go. I don't know how much this one has been retrofitted because again it does look like some of the parts on here potentially have been retrofitted at some point if the autofocus wants to get them. But essentially it takes 2D batteries, although I think with a lot of these it seems to depend on the model and manufacturer how many batteries they took, because I know with the CDV 700s some are um, I think 4D cells aren't they, and then others are like 2D cells, and I think some are even 1D cells. Um, and with the 715 some are 1D cells, some are 2D cells. Um, so maybe there's versions of this that only did one D cell, but anyway. So, 
It's got the standard ionisation chamber there that looks very similar to the CDV 700s, uh, so sorry, 715s one. However, you can see there that it's got the sort of protective base plate on it, and then it's just the bottom of the ionisation chamber is a bit thinner. Now, it might be possible to unglue this bit there, but I don't want to damage it because I think they've just essentially glued that protective plate on. That would make it more sensitive, but obviously I don't want to damage it. So you've got essentially like a washer here, a rubber washer, that's just it makes a good seal with the case. Um, and then, yeah, that's all pretty straightforward. So the calibration looks a bit different on this model than the i715. It's got these sort of slightly more robust ones that you need a screwdriver to turn, whereas the CDV700s I've had and the 715 had the ones that you can kind of turn with your thumb, but it's not very practical to do with a screwdriver. But it seems to be when you turn with a screwdriver, bits of the plastic chips off due to age. Um, so yeah, that's the calibration controls. So you can see where at one point they've been marked with a bit of red on there and there. I've been playing about with the calibration on this to see if I could get readings on it. Um, but as I said, annoyingly I can't seem to. Um, well, I can get readings, but it's always in that range of where they tell you not to bother taking the reading because it could just be mechanical warm-up. So let's um, make this run now. So what I'm going to do is angle the camera at the floor so we can see this up close and personal. And although it's, I'm not going to use a check sort of it because I won't be able to get a reading, I will talk you through the setup of it. So, you know, you can see, oh, that's how it would work if you actually had to use one. Okay, so here we go. This is a CDV720. So what you do first is do a circuit check. That basically checks that the batteries have enough power in them. Um, you know, it has to stop. The needle has to stop in that red zone. It's stopping right at the bottom of it. So the batteries might not have the energy to do this. But, um, you know, we'll check anyway. But... Um, as I said, I won't be able to get a reading on it anyway, but I might try some new batteries in this as soon as the video is finished, just to see if maybe the batteries I've got in there aren't too great. Another thing to point out with these, just a very important factor, so you don't break them like I've done with my 715 that I need to repair, or you don't get false readings, is I'm pretty sure these are very fussy on 1.5 volt D cells. Um, because you can get, obviously, batteries, rechargeable batteries are 1.2 volts, generally, um, I found with some of these things that if you put lower um, volt batteries in, you'll have the issue of, although it won't break it, um, you know, it's less sensitive, which in a doomsday scenario might be a good idea if you've already got, gone off the scale on the times 100. But from the um, sort of, you know, thing for most people, you're going to want them to be more sensitive, not less sensitive. But don't go over the 1.5 volts. A lot of electronics, um, even old ones of sort of this period, have safeguards in, so if you put too much voltage through them, they won't work. It seems of a lot of these old sort of CDV era things that if you put a bit, you know, too high voltage batteries in that would fit in, or you're doing some tests of them with higher voltages, you know, to raise sensitivity, you can blow capacitors in them fairly easily. So I'm just saying that as a warning now, if you've got something that, you know, is D cell size that will fit in there that's higher voltage in a D cell, be very careful. Um, again, the problem is with a lot of these old antique CDV things anyway, is that due to age, a lot of the parts are close to wearing out anyway, so they're probably pretty fragile. So anyway, you do your circuit check, and I know it's not doing it at the moment, but we'd assume that's draining the batteries very fast, isn't it? If the circuit check's making the needle go down that quickly, unless that's actually where they're stabilised. But anyway, let's just pretend it was in the circuit check region. So what you do is you check your batteries were in the circuit check reason, uh, region, that means that you know there's enough voltage going into it. Then what you do is go to zero. Then what you do is you use the little zero uh, sort of dial there to get it directly onto the zero which can be easier said than done because with a lot of these um, they are very very fragile when it comes to um, you know very sensitive when it comes to zero so that looks like it's just about on the zero there so what you do is you dial it all the way to times one so what that does is basically it puts it on its most sensitive setting and then what you do is you basically hope you don't get a reading on times one well you'd hope the unit's working and you don't get a reading so therefore, you know, you're not getting horribly irradiated. Um, but if it went off the scale, you'd then go to times 10. If it went off the scale again after a bit of time waiting for it, you know, to settle down, you go to times 100. If it goes off the scale, then um, probably, you know, off yourself pretty quickly before the radiation gets you. Of course, that's if your unit isn't broken, because if your unit's broken, that would be, you know, a very silly thing to kill yourself over. But, you know, this r range is on this one from 0 to 5 Rontgen per hour, which is very similar to 0 to 5 centigrade per hour. Um, if you're using, you know, or Centisiva, if you're using the modern thing. Um, if you go on the times 10, it's 0 to 50 Rontgen per hour, and on the times 100, it's 0 to 500 Rontgen per hour. So, in terms of radiation sickness numbers, when humans get exposed to about 100 Rontgen, um, that's when radiation sickness kicks in. 
that's about one sievert. When you get exposed to 500 Rontgens, that's generally when most people are going to start dying from radiation poisoning. But obviously, the more you're exposed to, the worse it gets. If you're exposed to more than, um, you know, that amount of radiation, you're really, really screwed. Um, but anyway, so what you do, obviously, is you just check where the number is. So these are basically the doomsday meters. What the point of these was, like the 715, was that you could tell after a nuclear attack or a nuclear disaster just how dangerous it was outside a fallout shelter. There's the 715, which I've done a video on already. This one's the 720, and they also did one, I think it was the 717, where it's like a 715, but you can put the ionization chamber on a long extension cable so you can have it outside the shelter. So another thing to point out, this is not a Geiger counter. It's an ionization ch uh, chamber device. The difference is, rather than having a probe, it basically has a positive and negative side of the ion chamber. Um, when radioactive sort of decays enter it, that's what registers. Um, there's pros and cons to iron chambers versus Geiger counters. Iron chambers are generally cheaper to mass produce. Um, Geiger counters are better for sort of higher sensitivity. Um, but generally iron chambers are better at the higher, sort of really dangerous end. Um, so as I said, pros and cons to each one. What they did with the US CDV series was the 700s were designed for checking for sort of low levels of radiation. The 7, sort of 15, 720 were designed for checking for you know, when it's really, really bad, just how bad it is. Now, it looks like the number is still going down on there, so I, I reckon something's gone on with the batteries here, and it's draining them really quickly. Or is that fine now? Was it just having to warm up? So anyway, we'll go back to zero, and we'll put that back on the zero, and then we'll just check it, because that wasn't happening before today. But as I said, I wasn't able to get any readings on this anyway, so it didn't really matter, um, and I've not got a check source next to it at the moment anyway. But, you know, these these are pretty interesting devices, Personally, I wouldn't buy one of these if I wanted one for a survival scenario type thing. I, you know, got one because I like collecting this kind of stuff. Um, but, yeah, if you're in the US and you can find one really cheaply, it's probably worth getting. Um, I mean, ideally, what you would have had is this sort of one with the beta window and the sliding beta cover um, on the 715 sort of um, system that allowed you to go to point 0.1. That would have been the ideal system. Uh, whether or not you can take the ionisation chamber out of this one um, attach it to a 715's body and get it to work, I don't know. Um, you know, try that at your own risk if you're into electronics, because you might blow something up or break something. Um, but yeah, I suppose this would have been pretty good at the time, but as I said, the problem is now that for the price of getting one of these, you can buy much newer things that are a lot more reliable. Sadly, it seems a lot of iron chamber devices are very expensive still today. When I was looking at some of the Ludlum models and things, they retail for about a thousand pounds, thousand dollars. Even some of the second-hand Ludlum things are pretty expensive. Um, that you know, are pretty much equivalent to this, just newer. So, as I've said before, if you want a Geiger counter or you know, radiation detecting quick piece of equipment that does a very good range, the Therapy has been the best thing I've found so far because it goes from you know, essentially 0 0.01 millisieverts all the way up to um, 9,000 sorry um, microsieverts, so an even smaller number, all the way up to 9,999 millisieverts, so 9.99 sieverts. So to give you some idea in Rontgen numbers, it pretty much does 0 0.01, I'd imagine that is, milli-Rontgen, all the way up to something like 1,114 Rontgen, a number something like that. So it covers a wider range of things than this. It's a modern digital thing that, you know, just takes AAA batteries. The battery life in it is for, eight, you know, last stages. It shows you both your accumulative dose and the um, active dose. But, you know, these are good old novelties, so if you're in the US and you can get them cheaply, or you just spot one cheaply somewhere, it's probably worth getting one just to tinker about with it and have a bit of fun and have a cool antique prop. But as far as these meters go, the 715, I can understand why they mass-produced it more, because it was cheaper to mass-produce, and it had the 0.1 multiplier on it. Um, and, you know, the CDV 700 is the one most people actually get find a use for, because if you've got one that works, you can actually take measurements of background radiation with it and things like thorium lamp mantles, you know, fiesta wear and all that stuff, because it's a much, you know, higher sensitivity, sort of lower radiation range device, whereas this is a doomsday meter, but, you know, these are cool things. Um, so if you could get one cheap as a DIY project to do up, that would be a cool thing to do, you know, and if you could get one cheap that works, you know, it's cool to have around, but if you wanted one for serious radiation detecting equipment, personally, I wouldn't go for this, but, you know, it is what it is. And as I said, the only thing that really frustrated me with it is it's got this sliding beta window on the bottom, but even when I'd fully opened it and put strontium-90 and radium, you know, all over this bottom bit, I couldn't get a reading at all, where on some of my other iron chamber units I could get readings from that. But, you know, the CDV 720 is what it is. I don't think it's bad by any means, it's just probably this one's so old and, you know, 
they were basing it off of what they knew at the time, you know, and this equipment's moved on a lot since then. But yeah, it's an interesting device. It seems a shame to me that, you know, they didn't do, like I was saying, a CDV715, which had the beta window on the bottom, or a slightly better built beta one. Um, but, you know, just to repeat myself, if you spot one cheap enough, might as well get it. And this one lets you put the two um, sort of carry cables on, just like the 700 and the 715 as well. So, there you go, that's my review of the 720. Unfortunately, this one doesn't work. It says OCDM item number CDV720, model number 3A, serial number 29020 the Victorine Instrument Company, Cleveland, Ohio. So, I've got three Victorine things now. This one, 715 and the 700, uh, 6B. And I've got one CDV 700 that is a um, Neutron Electronics or something it's called. And I've also got, I think it's a Johnson 750 uh, decimeter charger thing that I'll do a video on at some point. I'll probably just put all my decimeter chargers into one video, I think, because a lot of people aren't probably interested too much in decimeter chargers on a video on their own. Also, uh, just for the people that complain you're doing too many Geiger counter videos, too many radiation detecting videos, if you want me to do a video on a different gas mask or whatever, please suggest one. It's much nicer if somebody says, could you please do a video on something, and they've checked that I've not already done a video on it on my channel, or could you do an updated video on something, rather than just whinging that you're doing too many videos on one subject at the moment, because you've got lots of new kit, you know, to show in these videos, wah wah wah, do a video on something else. Yeah, politely tell me if you think you've got a good idea for a video, and I'd be happy to do a video on it, but yeah, don't really whinge that I'm not doing videos on your favourite subject, when you're not even going to provide suggestions. And you've probably not even looked through my backlog of videos, to be honest, that I have not done it. But for most people, peace, cool. Um, don't forget to like the video, because it seems to help them get shared. And, um, you know, feel free to ask any questions about these in the comments. And I'm sure there's probably some Americans who are really familiar with these CDV things who can say some of the pros and cons of them as well. This one didn't come with the manual. It was just literally this iron chamber device, the silica gel I put in separately as well. So it was literally just the casing and the, um, you know, all the electronics. Uh, where some of these I've bought, you know, have come with a complete kit, but there you go. That's the CDV720. Um, I'm going to change the batteries now I've finished the video and just see if it keeps draining or not. What's the circuit check doing now, just as I end the video? Uh, I think it was probably just having to warm up a bit. So that seems fine now, but I imagine playing with a calibration edits the battery drain as well. But there you go, that's the CDV720. I've prattled on long enough about it, you know. Uh, if you want to go back and hear more about it, rewatch the video, I guess.